My name's Ghost Roast, and I'm here to teach you everything there is to know about Warzone Mobile. Do you want to hit nasty shots like this and be the best in the game? Then let's drop into the Warzone. That's better. Okay, welcome to Warzone Mobile. And in this video, I'm going to give you the absolute best settings to use to turn you into an absolute demon and help boost your FPS and gameplay to the max on all devices. So we're going to start this video with Android, where before even loading up Warzone Mobile, you want to optimize your device with this secret tip. Go to your Android settings and scroll down to your about phone section. In there, you'll see a build number for your device. And if you press that build number seven times, it would unlock developer options. In developer options, you want to scroll down and turn your window, transition and animator scales, all of them down to times one. This will help speed up your device if you have background apps running, but you shouldn't have background apps running anyway, so take them off. Now here it is, it's time for the game settings. This is for both iOS and Android and the first thing you want to do is change your graphic settings. Now if you have a high-end device with high RAM, the best settings to use are visual quality set to high and FPS set to uncapped. This means that your device can run more than 60 FPS, even all the way up to 120 FPS, depending on your device. Now for low to mid end devices, if you've got a device that's around sort of three gigabytes of RAM, you should still have the FPS set to uncapped to get the most FPS as possible. But if you are experiencing lag issues by having the uncapped FPS, then keep lowering the visual quality until it feels good. Also make sure to have the frame rate option enabled here and allow high res streaming here. For your field of view, you wanna have that on the highest as you can, because anything 90 or below will feel too up close and it will make it harder in gunfights. Now let's get on to the control settings. The first thing you want to do is customize your HUD and Warzone Mobile has a lot of buttons which can be quite scary so here's an image that I've made that shows you what every single button does. Now your HUD is going to be obviously customized to you and everyone's HUD is going to be different so if you're a two finger player if you're a six finger player they're all going to be different. Here's what mine looks like and I use five fingers and it's easy to use and you know feel free to copy it if it helps. So there's some things you need to do on the HUD menu. On the HUD you have variants and the main one you need to change is for your weapon. So if you highlight your weapon and hit the button variants, on here you want to have your ammo integrated which means that it puts your ammo inside the weapon box which creates more space on your screen. Now you have classic, minimalist and multi gesture. I like to use minimalist because it just adds a one weapon box on the screen so all you need to do is tap it to change weapon when you're in the game. And then if you back out of the HUD screen you also have your control sets which is your HUD presets. You can save any of your HUD presets if you're on controller, if you're on mobile, and even some of the default ones are quite good as well. So you can mix and match and find what best HUD works for you. But to get the best out of the game, you want to create and customize your own. Now back to the main screen, your weapon trigger you want to set as manual fire. If you have auto fire, it means that you only have to move your cursor over the enemy, but there is a slight delay in shooting. So you want to have it set to manual. So when you press the fire button, you're firing yourself. Now let's cover the control settings, which are very important so pay close attention. Automations you want on to make it easier for you. You want auto pick up weapons which means you won't have to look at the floor and pick up the weapon yourself which wastes time. All you have to do is walk over it and your character will pick up that weapon. And you can also set priorities too in which weapons you want to pick up first. And then if you scroll down slightly you want to set parachute to manual as it gets very annoying when you're jumping off buildings and your shoot just goes off automatically. And then just below that you want to set auto crouch to off so you can crouch yourself. You don't want to be auto crouching. Sprint to stand you want set to on because when you're either crouched or prone, you just need to tap the tack sprint button to stand back up, which saves a lot of time in getting up. Camera rotation mode you need set to accelerated to increase your rotation speed when you're aiming down sights. The next four settings you want all of them set to on. This basically allows you to use your finger and your thumb to rotate the screen so you get that extra aiming ability. So it's very important to have them on. Weapon mount delay you want set to short, which will reduce the time you take exiting when you're mounted with a weapon and in the combat settings make sure to turn auto fire off for single shot behavior this is for shotguns snipers and launchers so if you want to you know just tap the fire button then you can set them all to on tap or if you want to hold the fire button then release it to shoot then set to on release for me i use on tap it's much quicker and easier aim down sights when firing you want to make sure it's set to off as this means you will automatically aim down sight when pressing the fire button which you don't want so you want to be able to aim down the sight button separately aim down sight behavior it's to your preference i like just tapping it instead of having to hold it but that's entirely up to you auto melee you want set to off if you have 
it on, then you won't be able to see a punch button on your screen and you want to be able to melee yourself instead of doing it automatically when you're close to an enemy. Sprinting door batch you want set to on so you can smash through doors instead of having to open them by yourself. Force reload set to off as you want to manually do that yourself as well. Same as force equipping armor. This is quite important so you can press the armor plates yourself as well because you don't want the game to automatically armor you up when you're in the middle of a fight. Equip all armor plates. You want that definitely set to one. That's very important as basically you have three armor plate slots so when pressing it if you are empty it will keep adding armor plates until you are full if you don't have that on when you press the armor plate it will just equip one aim assist is the big one you will obviously need on this helps you lock onto targets and it's pretty much a must for all mobile games vehicle controls set them to arrows which makes it a lot easier to steer all vehicles in the game especially helicopters and then for outlines you want all of these on this makes it easier to differentiate enemies and teammates now we're going to move on to interface for the combat tab, just copy these settings and the most important one you want to change is the hit marker size. It's default set to normal, but if you put it to small, when you're shooting enemies, you want to see this massive big hit marker on the screen. For the movement tab, have auto sprint turned off because you have the tack sprint button on your HUD, which you'll want to use to sprint. If you have it on, it will affect your tack sprint button and ruin your movement. Change stance doesn't really matter, so leave that on merged. Then turn off fixed joystick as you want it floating, which means whenever you place your finger on the screen, the joystick will be on that spot instead of fixed in the bottom left corner. Alerts can be turned on, and that's it. So now the most important thing, aim. Let's get into the sensitivity. As default, it will be set to super high, so the best I've found are these, but again, this will be different to all of you guys. Aim is on 50, and aim sense is on 0.75. The aim sense basically just multiplies your overall aim, so you want to keep that quite low. For controller, I use a 7 and 7, but again, change that to what you prefer if you use controller. For ADS, you'll have a global multiplier, but that doesn't really do anything, so you can just leave that as it is. It's the other ADS sensitivities that are the important ones, so you want to get them as low as possible. I'd probably say half of what they are on default for every single type of zoom scope. Again, this is trial and error. You want to fiddle around with these, but these are my settings. So if you like them, use them. But to get the best thing for you, change them to what you like. And that's it. These are the best settings to use in Call of Duty Walls on Mobile. Now, drop a like and let me know in the comments if they work well for you. And subscribe because I got some more juicy pro tips for Walls on Mobile coming your way. Roast, roast, going dark.